Okay, as promised, I have extended the adder accumulator circuit to become a multiplier, an 8-bit multiplier. So this multiplies two 8-bit numbers and gives a 8-bit result, which may be truncated. You can modify this to give a 16-bit result pretty easily, but most of the circuit becomes 16-bit all the way through, so you might as well handle 16-bit inputs as well. Anyway, so this is the 8-bit multiplier. Um, the right-hand portion of this circuit is pretty much identical to the adder accumulator that I posted previously, except I've been able to um, make the triple input and gates uh, just dual input. So these are pretty much normal full adders now. I did some work and discovered I didn't really need that uh, ability to suppress the carry. On the left-hand side, there's really three major sections. This upper left section here is the control section, and it really uh, just controls the sequencing of different parts of the circuit. And it looks complicated, but 99% of this is just so I can see what's going on in the simulator. Um, as you can see, there are only two outputs that are connected into the rest of the circuit. And these just go high, uh, first this one and then this one, so they, they stay high, um, sort of like a counter. It's basically like a Johnson ring counter, but not in a complete ring. And then this is a binary counter down here, which I have feeding into an output just to display a number. I can see which bit number is being worked on. So once again, 99% of this control section is not necessary at all. We just need these two outputs up here and uh, this gate and this inverter. There are still uh, two input buttons. Um, a clear button, which resets the whole circuit and sets the output to zero, and a clock button, which um, performs two functions. It clocks in the operands, and it also um, clocks the multiplication circuit through each of the eight bits. There is a red LED right here, and that lights up red when the multiplication is complete, which is after all eight bits have been processed. The next section of the circuit is this um, th uh, three-state buffer, and this is because we have essentially a, a, a bus here in the middle, and different parts of the circuit can place data on the bus. So when we're loading operands in, um, this buffer will copy the input onto this bus, and when we're done loading the operands in, then this buffer, uh, the outputs go into a high impedance state so that they don't affect the bus. If you were building a larger multiplier, you would just use more buffers. Or you could um, have, like, say, an 8-bit input that loads an internal 16-bit bus in two cycles, or something like that. And the third part of the circuit is this section down here. And what we have here are two um, parallel input shift registers. Um, the first one is really only needs to be parallel input serial output but I'm just using two of the same components the bottom one is parallel input and parallel output so this uh, will um, be functioning with these um, IO pins as inputs load the data and then later it will be um, using these IO pins down here as outputs and be putting the data on the bus so this works pretty much like long multiplication. Um, you multiply operand A times bit 1 of operand B. If that bit is a 1, then you get all of operand A um, added into the accumulator. If the bit is 0, then nothing happens. Then we shift operand A to the left one bit position and multiply it by bit 2 of operand B. 
we shift operand A to the left again, multiply it times bit 3 operand B, and so forth until the multiplication is complete. This lower uh, register here is the one that shifts operand A into um, each of the eight different possible positions. And this is a left shift that happens here. The shift register above um, basically is shifting out the least significant bit of operand B and then it continues to do a right shift. So each time um, we're just shifting out the lowest bit. And that's your multiplication. If, if this bit that's shifted out is a 1, then this AND gate will be activated and that will clock um, this register to store the output of the adder. If the output bit is a zero, then the output of this AND gate will be zero, and the register will not receive a clock signal. So the output of the adder is simply ignored. Now this adder accumulator, if you didn't see the previous video, um, it adds whatever's on this 8-bit bus to whatever the output of this register is. So you see the register outputs feedback into the adder. So that's why it functions as an adder accumulator. It just keeps adding the input into this register. Whatever number is already in the register, the new input gets added to it and stored in the register. And of course, we can see the output here. So let's give this thing a whirl and see if it works. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here um, after we do a couple multiplications. First thing we need to do is clear the circuit. It starts up in a in a unpredictable state. In a real live circuit um, with hardware, you would have some kind of a power on reset, perhaps. But the uh, clear signal in a computer system would be used to tell the multiplier that we are uh, ready to begin a new multiplication. What we do is we put in the number we want to multiply by, let's say, 3 and we clock it in. Then we put in the next operand, let's say 5, and clock that in. And then we just continue clocking until the red LED turns on. And here's our answer, 15. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's try something a little harder. Let's multiply 85 got a nice bit pattern. 85 times 2. So let's um, clear this. Clock in the 85. Clock in a 2. And just continue clocking. Answer is 170. Okay. How about 2 times 85? We'll clock in a 2. And then we will clock in at 85. And there's our answer, 170. Let's clear it. Let's try uh, 3 times 85. So we will clock in at 3, clock in at 85. The answer is 255. That's the largest number that can be properly represented by the multiplier. Let's see if we can zoom in and take a closer look at what's happening in different parts of this circuit. All right, what numbers should we multiply now? Let's say 11. So this is the first um, step here. We've cleared the multiplier. So we have a zero on the output. Um, these registers might contain some data, but it doesn't matter because they're about to get new inputs. The um, this um, buffer here is driving this bus because these active low 
um, output enable inputs are low. And then, um, did I clock that in? I can't remember. All right, let's clock in the 11. Okay, actually, let's start over. I want to show you what happens. So when we clock in the 11, what's happening here is that this clock pulse is coming down to this shift register. The S0 and S1 inputs are in the high state, which means it's in the mode to load data. So we are loading the 8-bit parallel data off of this bus. It's coming from the input through this buffer down the bus and being loaded into this shift register. And that's on the rising edge of this clock signal right here. Okay. And now let's load our 12. When we hit this clock signal, it's still going to this register, but it's no longer in the state to accept input. It goes down to this register, um, which does have both S0 and S1 in the high state, which means to load data. So that's what happens there. You'll notice on when I release the clock signal, um, you know, on the falling edge of that clock, some of these um, states or modes for the shift registers change state there. So there's no race conditions between clocking the register and changing the mode of the register. Now, we have already performed the first um, bit multiply and it's bit zero that we've performed. You can see that the clock coming out of this AND gate has gone high, and that's because the lowest bit of our um, the number stored in this shift register was a one, and so then that has uh, been clocked in to this um, register right here. And we can see that that was uh, a 12. Okay. And each time we hit the clock, it is going to continue clocking both shift registers. Now, what mode are they in? This one up here is in a mode to shift to the right. So the, the lowest bit always gets shifted out. And this one here is in a mode to shift to the left. So the data across this bus is getting shifted one bit to the left um, towards the most significant bit position which is like multiplying by two. It's kind of like in long multiplication on paper, how each column of digits as you go to the left is multiplying by 10. You've got your ones, your tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. except this is binary. So let's continue clocking this. All right, we have the answer 132, which is correct. 11 times 12 is 132. Well, that's about all there is to say about this uh, multiplier. It doesn't use a whole lot of circuitry to do multiplication. Um, we do have a carry input and a carry output on the adder. So this can be expanded to be 16 bits or 24 bits or 32 bits. Um, it is a ripple carry adder, so that will be a bottleneck in terms of speed because it takes time for the carry digit to ripple through these gates. There's a two gate um, delay on each um, bit position. And that can really add up if you're dealing with a 16 or a 32 bit adder. There's other adders that are faster um, and I have a post in the minimalist computing Facebook group uh, with one that I found that I really like and I'll probably replace this adder with a faster adder when I move to 16 bits. In a real life circuit, that would dictate probably the highest clock speed that everything could run at. These other chips over here don't really have to operate all that fast. They just have to operate at whatever this clock speed is. But we do need the data um, to ripple through the adder within one clock cycle. It does have the full clock cycle to do that, 
but depending on how fast your adder is, you may have to slow down your clock for it to work.